Welcome to another edition of Veritas ABC's Replacing Failed Disk. The scope of this tutorial is to provide basic fundamental information that administrators will need to replace a failed disk in Veritas. The audience for this presentation are those individuals or administrators who are responsible for disk management, specifically on Veritas Volume Management Server. Generally, it's a good idea to make sure that all your root mirrors have a spare disk. There are some instances where you will inherit a legacy system that does not have a spare disk. Uh, in this event, you probably might want to consider putting a spare disk in the uh, root mirror of that system. If you choose to do so, the method that you would use to bring that spare disk into the system is by running a series of commands. The first command that you would run is config ADM. This command forces your operating system to rescan, not the operating system, this command forces your system to scan for new devices and disks that have been recently added. Once this is complete, you will see an output of its findings. There's an example of this command and all these commands in several of my other uh, Veritas uh, tutorials. You, but anyway, moving forward, you will be able to see the output of that, uh, of that command. You'll see the new devices and the new disk registered. Once all the new disks are registered, the next thing that you want, to, you want to do is load the software drivers for that disk. You can achieve that by running the dev s ADM command which is shown here there's no real output from that command but basically it's going to load the drivers for you the next step is to format and label the disk uh, after typing format you will see a menu selection you select the selection that corresponds to the disk in question and then you proceed to label and exit that menu and finally you would have to do a VXDCTL enable and this is going to bring the disk under Veritas control. Once Veritas can use this you have to add it to the disk group in question and mark it as a spare. The VX edit command will help you achieve this. The syntax for that command is VX edit minus G. The group in question is root DG set spare on and then you just <clears throat> then you just uh, put in the actual d disk device name and this example it's controller 1 target 3 disk 0 VX disk list will be able to give you an output showing you that the disk has been marked as a hot spare and our output here we can see that controller 1 target 3 disk 0 has been marked as an online spare. So what would happen is that if either of these two disks fail uh, on target 0 or target 1, then target 3 would kick into action and uh, basically ensure the integrity of the mirror, giving you time to replace either of these failed disks and bring the system back to its uh, normal state of operation. And again, the, the reason for having a hot spare is that you want to make sure that you don't have a system outage due to back-to-back -back disk failures because sometimes that can happen. Okay, identifying failed disk. VX disk list is one of commands that we could use to identify failed disk. What you would see as an example, uh, controller one target zero disk zero has failed and the status is online and failing. Another way that you can locate failed disk is to use the IO stack command. The IO stat is a very powerful utility if you will and you can use it for several things. One of the things that you can use it for as I've mentioned is to identify failed disk. The switches that we would use for IOSTAT would be IOSTAT minus E N. The E basically, the E option displays all the device errors and statistics, and the small N displays the name in the descriptive format. 
Here's an example of the IO stats output. I do have to warn you, after running IO stats minus EN, you'll find that you'll have a very a screen full of output if you have a disk a system with multiple uh, disks. In uh, that rate, you want at at that point you may want to try to look in some type of method of maybe reducing the screen output. Maybe you can grep the disk information, or maybe you can uh, pipe it into not pipe it, but use a redirect and direct the output into a file of which you can kind of scroll through at your own pace. You could also do a IOSTAT minus EN more. But I just find that uh, if there's if you're expecting a lot of output that you have to scroll through, it's better to just direct it to a file and uh, basically search the file, for the disk that you're concerned about. But this is what the output would look like, and you'll see that it's going to actually list the the, the disk device name, followed by some of the information. Uh, so you have soft errors and hardware transport errors, uh, the type of vendor, the product, the serial number, and the size of the actual disk. And it gives additional information, but all this information will be kind of uh, kind of flooding the screen. And the only way to figure out, and you have to make an effort to see where one disk begins and the other one ends. For example, it would be quite a bit of effort to see that C1, T0, D0 uh, kind of in because, uh, you know, C1, T1, D0 would be easy to miss. But at any rate, moving on. Okay, so in the output, we saw that uh, C1, tar controller 1, target 0, D0 has 25 soft errors and 285 hard errors. The soft errors are basically writes that were, a write was attempted to be made to a disk. It may have failed once, but the subsequent tries were successful. Hard errors are critical errors. There are situations where a write was attempted on a disk, it failed, and all subsequent writes attempts at that disk fail. Some administrators may choose to remove the soft error flag. The way to do this is to use the command VX edit minus G, VX edit minus G, and then list the group, set failing off, and then list the disk device. In the event that you have, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. So once you remove that flag, what you probably could do is periodically monitor that disk for some time to see if you continue to get soft errors. If you do continue to get them, you may want to consider trying to replace that disk anyways because there may be a reason that you're continuously getting soft errors. And it's prob it probably has a lot to do with the disk uh, on its way on its last leg. The hard errors on the disk, however, are indication that uh, the disk should be replaced ASAP. If you have a hard error, you would want to run the VXDisk ADM command, select op option 4 to remove the disk and follow the prompts and exit that menu, <coughs> that menu screen. You then should do a VX disk list so that you can see the results of running the VX ADM command. In this example, we can see the results are that the Veritas name for the disk root DG01 was removed and the actual device name is controller one target zero disk zero. You could also do a VX print command to further check the status of the plexus that were on that disk. And just to let you know, I actually had to cut out a lot of information simply because it just wouldn't fit on the screen. So in this example, I just tried to retain the information that showed that the root DG01 was removed. And if you see if you pay attention it yeah, okay so root dgz1 it tells you it was removed and all the volumes and plexes associated with that mirror 
with that disk has been removed as well. So root file zero one is gone, swap file zero one is gone, as well as root dg zero one has been removed. At this point, you're just hopefully your hot spare has kicked in if you had one. If you didn't have one, your system is now running on one disk and it is vulnerable. You're at this point you're basically waiting to get a new disk either shipped to you by the vendor or you've gone out and gotten a new disk. In that case, you are going to perform the following actions again. Uh, you already performed these actions that or we already spoke about these actions at the beginning of this tutorial so I'm just going to go through them really quickly here config ADM, devs ADM, format and label and vxdctl enable if you want to see the output of some of these commands you can see them in uh, some other videos that I have posted okay so installing a new disk VX disk list is the command you always want to see run just to see where you're at and make sure that you're on the same page so we can see after running all those commands we now see that C1 T0 D0 is online it's online but it isn't in the uh, root DG disk group we go and run VX disk ADM again we select option 5 and we use this option to uh, basically put the disk put the new disk back into the uh, group and mirror it at this point you really just want to follow all the prompts eventually you're going to be asked if you want to use FMR which is fast mirror resync for the purpose of this tutorial you want to say no you can also open up another SSH window so you can get a little bit more detailed information while the uh, the syncing the of the root mirror uh, is taking place uh, your screen that session of SSH will be locked up in a new session you can type VX print and you will see that the volumes are starting the plexes and again I cut out the detail a lot of the details in VX print just to highlight uh, you know the recovery of the system so we can see that home dash zero one is being recovered we can see swap file zero one is being recovered as well as I believe root file would be recovering but uh, I left that out another command you can run is VX task list or VX task monitor VX task list will just give you a simple uh, snapshot of what's going on and what the status is VX task monitor will give you a continuous flow of the same information in this example we've used VX task and basically it's saying the parent root D zero root root DG zero one uh, the root the uh, the mirror disk to uh, oh, oh it's tongue tied here okay it's basically showing you the parent disk root DG zero one is in recovery status and is at 33 percent the plex that it's working on at this time is swap vowel zero one and that sinking the sinking of the uh, new plex is at 52 percent if you continue to type this command in you'll see that it's going to move on to root vowel it will also move on to home vowel so on and so forth this is pretty much the end of this tutorial if you have any questions comments or concerns please send me an email at busy386 at gmail.com if there are other Red Hat or Linux videos that you would like me to do, please send me an email and I would be delighted in doing it so long as it's within the context of Linux or Solaris. I'm not really interested in doing videos uh, outside of that scope at this time. Thank you.